you doing, Zef? Did you come for your new new bed? Yeah. <laughs> Big yawn. <laughs> Hey, kia ora. Helen Brown's coming to you live from Vista in California. Hope you're all having a super fantastic sparkling day. My hair's looking a little flat today. I don't know what's going on with it. Ha! Huh. Now my friend Casey's going to be going, she's playing with her hair. <laughs> Deal with it. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to totally throw myself off track. How was your Magic Monday? How did you get on with... Um, with... Um, Looking at the seven practical life lessons from Albert Einstein that we talked about this morning. Remember there was follow your curiosity, perseverance is priceless, make mistakes, um, create value. And it's creating value within yourself, not creating value. Because um, a lot of times in business we talk about um, giving value rather than always selling. So do less selling and more of giving value and content and that sort of thing. This was a different kind of value. This was talking about personal values, about beliefs and integrity and honesty and all that stuff. Good stuff. Um, knowledge comes from experience. And let's see, number six, excuse me, was learn the rules then play better. And number seven was imagination is powerful. Excuse me, I suddenly got the hiccups. So I tried to put as much of that into practice today as possible and got lost in rabbit holes. <laughs> Um, I did get to read some great materials, reading some material on um, the attitude of gratitude. And what else did I read on today? I did a lot of research on moving companies today. I had one person today who called me up, gave them the information that they needed, came back with the most expensive price that I have been quoted so far. Um, and um, when I told her that it was the most expensive price, I said, I've got prices for way less than half of what you're, cha what you're asking for. So I'm sorry, we will not be going with you. So then she sends me this email stating, oh, you know, please make sure that you, go, that you, um, that you qualify the movers carefully. Here, go to, here's the business bureau link, and here's this link for this, and here's this link for that to, to help you find the right movers and that sort of stuff. And I was like, that was really sweet of her to send that information over. But the way it was worded, I kind of took a little of offense to it, but I could I could um, get the sentiment behind it because I'd spoken to this person. Um, so I'd gotten a sense of her personality and our, and our conversation that we had. So when the email came through, I was a little offended by the way it was worded. It was it was sort of like, well, well, if you're not taking us, then you know, you gotta make sure you check out the other ones and you know, sort of like tell me what to do. But I could get, but I got, because I've met her on her personality level and listened to her voice and everything, and got to know her a little bit on that call, um, I knew the intent it was, it was presented with. So it got me thinking that when we write our emails, what tone are we using with the words that we use? Words are very powerful and the way that you construct them together could be misconstrued by somebody and they could take offense to them instead of in the light that it was intended. So be very careful. So that was something that I learned today. Um, that I learned um, was, you know, the power of the words, and especially if somebody doesn't know you, the way they read the, um, the email, they could take it in a completely different tone to what you mentioned, and that turns them off, and they're not gonna do business with you, period. So just be very, just watch the words. Have, Brad used to get me to read everything for him, before he posted, most of the time before he did some great big long post on Facebook, or if he was writing a letter or something, he would always get me to read it for him. Um, first thing I would do is put it in a Word document, take out all the double spaces after the period. <laughs> that was his fun. He was always, he was always space. He was always period, space, space. And I was like, you know, it's one space these days. We don't use typewriters. With typewriters, we had to use two spaces. Because on a typewriter, if you had one space, it, could, it was almost the same distance as the space in between letters. So you had to put two spaces there so you could see it was actually a sentence break. On the computer, you don't need to do that so much. But trying to, I mean, I, it took me a long time to convert to that as well because I was always period space space because I learned, you know, I did typing in high school for three years, four years. Hang on. Yeah, my whole, all my high school years. So from age 13 through to 17 when I left, I was doing typing every year. Um, it was really weird when I first did an electric typewriter. We were manual typewriters, but when I did an electric typewriter, that was really weird because you, you know, you're supposed to rest your fingers on the keys and then you, and of course you don't need to tap as hard as you did on a typewriter. 
And so I end up with like three A's, two B's, four C's. <laughs> Because I would go to tap down and because of how hard I tapped it would take me longer to get my finger off the key and it was enough for to, to to repetition of some of some letters in there. So there was a lot of correcting going on the first few days of typing on an electric typewriter before I got used to oh I don't need to tap the keys as hard. So when I trans transitioned to computers, I'd had that experience with electric typewriters so it made it a little easier. Um Although I did transition to keyboard to computers while I was in school, so um, yeah, but electric typewriters they were a completely different beast to the old manual ones. Anyway, going down another rabbit hole again. <laughs> but yeah, so um, look at what you're writing. What's the tone? Even go away for a while and then come back to it again. And one thing I learned when I was doing proofreading many years ago was always read back to front. If you start at the bottom of the page and work your way backwards through the sentences up to the top of the page, you actually find more errors that way because you're now forcing your eyes and your brain to look at each word individually. Is it the right word? Remember, there are several different versions of the word there. T-H-E-R-E, -E, T H E I. -E. R T H Y apostrophe R E. So you got to, is it the right one? Is it in the right context? So it's forcing, so when you're going back to front along the lines, it's forcing you to look at each individual word. Then when you get to the end of the sentence, then you read the sentence, then you go forward reading the sentence aloud to see if it make to see if it makes sense. But always take breaks because if you're sitting there and you're reading it and you're reading your, I have this one piece um, which I am so proud of. I did that I wrote this one piece it was a it's called flash fiction and flash fiction is anything between 300 and a thousand words and you got an entire story in there mine is a little bit of a cliffhanger but the emotion that it invokes is um, I get choked up reading it and I wrote it and I know what it says and I know how it's gonna end but I get emotional reading it and when I got it, and I, when I first wrote it it was around 800 words and um, I took it to my writers group and gave it to them and I, didn't, I said look this just popped into my head this this is how it got set up and this is what I wrote and so they went and read this piece and they all came back and said that is the best piece you have ever written now, I've been with this group of people for four or five years now um, they said it was the best piece I have ever written um, they said there was so much emotion in those short words and they even helped me they even gave suggestions on where I could trim some more extra words out to make it more condensed and have more of an impact on it so I went back and because I left I left it for a few days before I went back to it and then when I went back to it and looked at their suggestions and stuff I then went away thought about it and then came back and um, and made some corrections to the thing and came out with this powerful piece that I've already that I've shared with a select few people and um, they've all come back and we want more we want more so more is more for those that said they, they read that piece and said they want more more is coming um, <laughs> I'm actually um, writing a lot of flash fictions and I'm actually gonna publish together in one book so it'll be an anthology of flash fiction written by me so I don't know if I'll let other writers in on that one yet I haven't decided yet I may bring other writers into that into that anthology as well but I don't know have an anthology of flash fiction but it's pretty cool because there was a scene that I saw that invoked this particular piece I wrote and then um, then I was sitting at a campground and looking out on a lake and had another had another idea for flash fiction so that one's in the process of being written and then when I was driving along the road I saw an object down on the side of the road which which inspired me to write yet another piece so the pieces are coming um, they just even though it's only you know the final edition of the piece that I wrote that I really really like is 500 words just no, just over five it's somewhere around 500 words so we chopped out 300 excess words out of that piece um, and that was by having somebody else's eyes go over it and uh, then coming and then let it, letting it sit for a while and then coming back to it and doing the edit so when you're writing things before you know even if you're upset and you want to convey that anger or something you know think about who's going to be seeing this and how it would reflect on you is it going to create, go to Albert Einstein's number four here, create value. Is it going to 
go against your beliefs? Is it going to go against your integrity, your honesty? Are people going to see you in a different light because of this piece? So you've got to be careful of how you word things. I know I screw up at times with, with words and stuff. I just want to get it out there and then I go back and I look it up. <laughs> I post it. I'll, I'll read over it, make some corrections, then I'll post it. And then I go back like an hour later and go, oh my gosh, look at that error there. Look at that one. Oh, that's not what I meant. Oh, that's the wrong word in there. And I'll go back and edit <laughs> I kind of screwed that one up so we all make mistakes and we learn from our mistakes but that's okay so um how was your magic monday so i am still working on the mover thingy i did um my first amazon order in months i haven't done an amazon order since where was i when i last did an amazon order? i think i was in florida and i left florida on the 8th of may so i haven't done an amazon order since then but there's some stuff that i need for the rv like the filters for the AC unit, I can't get them in stores, so I have to order them. And Amazon's cheaper than going to the specialty stores. Um, and what else was there? And there's another couple of bits and pieces that I um, that I needed to get as well that I couldn't. It would require me going to several different stores to get them, and I'm like, yeah, no, no, no. Um, but one thing I did find, which I am. Um, eager to get and I think and I think it's the one that arrives tomorrow there's one arriving tomorrow and one arriving on Saturday I think the one that arrives tomorrow they've got these um these 3d silicon face masks well actually um not face mask face frames so it's a piece that goes around here that's made of silicon and it pushes the mask out and holds the mask off your face so um and then you put the you put the cloth you put this frame inside the mask and it holds the mask off your face so that when you're breathing because the problem with me when I put masks on is I start panicking so I start hyperventilating and when I'm and my mouth and I usually breathe through my nose and out through my mouth or just in and out through my nose but when I put those masks on all of a sudden my mouth is open and I'm like and I'm getting this cloth in my mouth which is kind of really makes me panic um, so I'm wondering if the help of these silicon things that will hold the mask off my face it's still does what it's supposed to do as far as the mask goes across the the nose and mouth and all of that sort of thing it just holds it off your nose and mouth so you're not breathing in that fabric um, if that makes sense I'll show it to you when I get it it's supposed to be here tomorrow so hopefully it'll be here tomorrow night for my live tomorrow night and time for that and I can show you so um, but I'm not gonna try it on I'll show you what it looks like and where it goes but you just put the mask over top of it and there's different ways that you can connect it to the mask like you can sew it onto the mask these completely washable so you can if you've got the cloth masks you can sew it onto the cloth mask and it stays there and it can go through the washing machine with your masks um that sort of stuff too but you would have to drip dry it because it is silicon so i'm not sure how that would go in the heat in the dryer i wouldn't want to put it in the dryer anyway i would air dry them yeah so anyway i'm going to go and zephy you want a treat? Let's see if she comes. Come front. What's this? Oh, here she comes. Here she comes. Come on. You want a treat? Up. Good girl. And then we take the treat and we jump down again. <laughs> she won't eat. If we do, if I, when I was, when I did Bucky's one time and I got the, um, their really good breakfast sandwiches, we sat here at the table. I was on this side of the table eating my sandwich and she was on the other side and I had a napkin there and I would put bits of the egg on there for her and she would sit there very prim and proper and as soon as the egg got there, she would bend over, eat it all up and then sit back. But now if I give her a treat here at the table, she's got to take it down onto the floor to eat. <laughs> she's very funny like that. But, um, so hope you all had a super fantastic sparkling magical Monday. I am off to... Go do some training in 25 minutes. <sighs> a lot of phone calls to make tomorrow. So I've been filling up my schedule of phone calls to make tomorrow. I've been going through a lot of emails today with all of the movers and stuff. And some of them are brokers and some of them aren't. And I've heard, I've heard horror stories about working with brokers. So we shall see. Definitely we'll be using the... We'll be looking at a lot of reviews and stuff. But anyway, have a super fantastic sparkling evening. And we will catch you guys tomorrow morning for Tune Up Tuesday. Funnily enough, I've been playing 80s music all day. It's been fun. So let's see, what era shall we do tomorrow for Tune Up Tuesday? You'll have to tune in tomorrow morning and find out. Hey, Conera. <laughs>